ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm looking at myself. I'm up there as well. Um, now, I'm not. I'm not coming from any uh, teaching or coaching background of handball or, or hurling. I wouldn't. Uh, the lads here would be doing an awful lot more than what I would have ever done in, in coaching. Um, if I'm just to say from, from my own point of view, I, I would have been obviously very high profile in, in hurling, certainly. And um, <clears throat> when, when I would say, or when, when people bring up uh, other sports or bring up handball, they, they wouldn't have realized that I would have been probably three to four times more successful at handball than I ever was at, at hurling, uh, even though my profile would have been in, in, in more in hurling. Uh, I suppose by the time I was, by the age of 18 or 19, I would have been in the States maybe on seven or eight occasions playing handball. Uh, there was uh, one, one year I was offered a, a scholarship to Wake Forest for handball, and uh, I possibly could have done PE teaching uh, ended because that was what I liked as well with sport. Uh, I think coming back to it, my number one would have been hurling, so I, I, I couldn't leave. Um, but all, all of what, what, what Enda has gone through, uh, I mean, if I'm just to, I, I don't have anything prepared, so I'm to press a button here, uh, and Tony, and we're going to go through a couple of slides. But when I look at the one wall handball, and when I look at hurling walls around the country, and hurling walls, in my opinion, are great, they're fantastic, and it does develop skills. But I think, for me, the most important thing, or would be the most important thing, is actually building those one wall uh, hurling walls as handball walls. One wall ha handball walls. Because, number one, and I do argue the point that we're basically all one sided in hurling, or we're all one sided in squash, or we're all, you know, in, in various different sports, particularly uh, the third dimension, which is a stick or a racket in your hand. Uh, and, and basically, we're all strong from. You know, either if you're a right hand, you can hit the ball left and you can hit the ball right. But you're, you're basically using your dominant side, you know, even though you're, you're going the other way. What I would find is there's so many people, uh, top-level people in handball or in hurling or in football or in other sports who are so uncoordinated with their weaker side. And it's something that I don't understand. And I'm, I'm saying that from, you know, if even some of the top-level hurlers can hit a hand, uh, can hand pass a ball six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, whatever it is yards. If you're to ask them to do it on their weaker side, they cannot do it. Just was never ever developed. And it's the same with one wall hurling. And obviously, and from my point of view, and I'd may, make no bones about it, my number one sport was hurling. But if I was changing that whole system around, I would be, I would be into guys handball. Practice handball. Practice your skills. Practice, you know, your both sides. When I, when I was growing up, I could throw a ball as good or as long, whatever way. It didn't matter what it was, whether it was with my left or my right, whether it was overarm or underarm, I could do the same. I could write. I could do almost everything. Uh, it didn't matter whether I picked up a glass with my left or my right. But everybody, everybody, as far as I can see, has very one dominant side. And that's the same in, in our own sport. I think if you're to look at, and I'm just looking at this thing in front of me here, but if you're to look at that picture there, both of those swings are the very same. I mean, we're in the very same position. And if you were to take other sports, if you were to take golf, if you were to take Gaelic football, and okay, you're kicking a ball. Like, in a position like that, uh, we're all basically the same. The weight must be going forward. You must be striking the ball pretty much out of the middle of your, of your, uh, of, of your body. My, my young fellas at the moment are, they, uh, it's a football season in Kilkenny, even though people mightn't think we play football. But by and large, it's all the same. It's all the same coaching uh, insofar as all sports come back to the very same fundamentals. If you want to kick a ball good, your weight is on the forward foot. If you want to hit a ball good, your weight is on the forward foot. If you want to strike a ball good, your weight, everything is going forward. And I think this, this game of handball, above all, stood to me more than anything in, in, in my own game of hurling. Um, if I was in trouble, I was able to hand pass a ball. It didn't matter whether it needed to do it left or right. People didn't know. People didn't know whether it was going to dummy hand pass. And I don't want this to, 
sound like it's all about me and I, uh, because that sounds a, a very boastful thing. Uh, so I'd hate anyone to think that from, from that point of view it would be boastful. But it's such an easy game to play, and I'm going back to the one wall again. It's such an easy game to play, no matter how many walls you have. And I never played one wall handball, uh, uh, simply because I was, the, the, the seasons didn't allow it. I was able to play 40 by 20 handball. Uh, and the two seasons for handball is 40 by 20 would be from January to let's say March or April. 60 by 30 then comes in more of a summer game. So that's when obviously Harlem was, was at its best. But once those dark evenings come in, in October, September, October, whatever it is, there is no better game to be getting kids involved in playing. Whatever, whatever about indoor hurling, whatever about all that, that's great and you keep that going. But from a coordination point of view, from both sides, from a thinking, from a feat, and, and Enda went through a young fellow there who was working on his, on his feet. When I go around the country, uh, and I'm asked to do little bits of coaching here and there, and I don't do that much in terms of hurling, I think one of the biggest problems that we have in sport is not enthusiasm, it's the lack of coordination. It's footwork. It's how poor young fellas are on their feet. Young boys, young girls. We can all teach how to rise, how to strike, how to catch. But it's actually the footwork um, that I see as one of the biggest, biggest drawbacks. And if, we'd, if we could get that right from the start, again, my own young fellas are playing a bit of handball, I'm trying to teach them it's, it's footwork. It's footwork first. Get the fundamentals right. It doesn't matter what you play after that, whether it's handball, hurling, soccer, rugby. Get the fundamentals right. People would ask me what would I, what, if, if I was to, you know, if I carp blanche on training a team, any age, if I carp blanche, what would I do first? And, and there's a few things, and you might laugh at this. My number one thing would be handball. My m number two thing would be to say, go get a ballet teacher and come in here and teach. Get, get them to teach players. Or number three would be uh, yoga or Pilates. Because all of those three, all of those three, but particularly handball because you're going to be using a ball and you're going to be using coordination. All of those three come back to balance, come back to footwork, coming back to, way, to the way that your body should be aligned. In striking a hurling ball, you know, the amount of young fellas and, and even adults that are lined up the wrong way, their feet are going one way, shoulders are going another, uh, hurl is going another. And basically, the most simple thing to do is have your feet, shoulders, and arms lined in one direction. Now, that doesn't happen. You can't think. You're not able to think. In this game of handball, you don't think. You don't do it. But you know what? Over a period of time, those two games there are so identical. It's not funny. They're so identical to everything that we do. The only thing is, as I say, you don't develop a weak side. You don't develop that left side, really, in, in most sports. And if you think about it, if you think of squash, if you think of tennis, if you think of racquetball, if you think of those, you don't really develop a weaker, a left side. Because we're all using, you're all basically using your dominant side, even though you might be hitting the backhand. In handball, you have to get this thing working. You have to get this left side working as good as you can. So that's going back to the, 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 the coordination and both sides. I think it's a, I, I probably would be, if I was looking down here now, I probably would be, I'm sure, uh, disappointed that there's not more people would look uh, at handball as number one, is it's a, it's a GA sport, and number two, is it's so easy to play. It's, uh, again, my, my young fellas are out there down below, and I hope they don't put marks of the balls on the walls down there. Pro lads probably saw them hitting the ball off the walls. But it's so simple to play. It's so easy to play. You know, it's, it's a shed. It's a wall. That's all it is. And it's not been encouraged enough. There's a few handball alleys have gone up new around the country, but there's a lot of handball alleys. And it's no secret, and I'm going to probably boast here, 
But it's no secret Kilkenny are so successful in hurling. In every area of Kilkenny City, every one of them can, you know, in every district of the city, there's two handball courts. And I think that means there's something like eight handball, outdoor handball courts in Kilkenny City. Now there's three or four indoor as well. It's no secret that, you know, the reaction of guys are, are quicker than most. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just no secret. It's no secret for me, you know, and it's such a natural thing to be able to hand pass a ball, to be able to hand pass it at distance, to be able to hand pass it to get myself out of trouble. And that's why I would think from, not, not because I'm speaking here and there's, there's, you know, there's obviously a few people uh, here, but that more people don't uh, realize how good a sport this is, particularly if you're in the coaching area, particularly if you're out there trying to coach, trying to look at something else, trying to keep something going over a winter. Because I'm sure there's a handball alley pretty close to most people. All kids, kids love sport. They don't mind what it is. They love to play. If there's something organized, they love to play. They, most times they just love to go out and play. Coaching isn't, doesn't even come into it. You go around there when big matches are on. There's 12 kids in in a court when there's, when there's a break. And they're lined up and one is uh, serving and the other is retrieving. And when they lose a pint, someone else comes in. But it's not, in my opinion, I'm probably speaking to the converted here. But it's such an easy game to organize and it's such an easy game to coach. And by and large, even if you're to give a person, a young kid, a, a ball and let him on and play, I think, you know, they would be doing him a great service. Let me, do I press a button here? Paul Brady. Um, Paul Brady, as most people would know, is a Cavan f footballer, as well as many, many world championships um, at handball. I remember having, I won't say the pleasure of playing him a few years ago in an exhibition match, and I, I basically couldn't continue to play handball and hurling at the same time at the levels that I was playing. Uh, but a few years after I'd given up handball, maybe seven or eight years, or hadn't played for a while, I played Paul in an exhibition match, which, he, in fairness to him, he went very easy on me. But I was at the height of my, you know, pretty much the height of my own career uh, in, in hurling, and as fit as I probably could be. And after about 11 aces, which he was taking very easily on me, I could hardly keep going because there's so many different attributes to handball. There's so many different things that you have to do. When I was playing handball at, you know, at, at a very high level, you know, I, I would have had as probably strong of shoulders in the game in terms of being able to hit overhand. When I played him a few years after, I was hard set to swing the, my arms because the muscles, you know, they, they don't go. But over, a year, over the years, I've never, never been in a gym. I have been in a gym, and I have tipped away at very small little weights when I had to do it. The Kenny team was getting into it as I was finishing. But in terms of doing any sort of uh, gym work, I'd never done any gym work in my life. But yet I was very strong. I was, I was strong at handball, and that transferred me. But that was all natural. That was all, whatever strength I had was actually natural from being able to play or be, playing handball uh, in terms of the handball muscles, the shoulders, the, the arms, whatever it was. Uh, that's where my physical strength from. So you can imagine, again, go to a 10, 11, 12-year-old in a handball alley. That's natural strength that he, she is going to develop. Don't need to be weights, don't need to be anything else. It's natural. My footwork all up along, that came from handball. I never done anything. We'd, we'd done a bit of skipping in my time, uh, maybe before we played a match or in training, skipping. That's all. There was nothing else involved. But yet, that was able to transfer to the hurling pitch. Anticipation. By and large, I could know when a guy is striking a ball, where it's going to come. By and large, I knew what way a ball was going to strike, what was going to, was going to bounce. And for anyone that's not familiar with handball, uh, at, at, at the high level, and I'm sure everyone is, you can... You can with your eye and with your instinct, you can, you can visualize how a ball is going to come. So at juvenile level, it won't be the same as senior. But at a senior level, when a guy is serving a ball, well, if he wants to spin it one way, he comes over it with his, with his elbow. When he wants to spin it another way, 
he comes underneath it. Now, when you're retrieving it at the other end and someone is striking very hard, you must be able to anticipate where that elbow is because you need to know that that ball is going to bounce left when it comes or it's going to bounce right when it comes. That was able, for me, that was able to transfer into hurling. I was able to know that a guy who was striking at left back, whether he was going to put it up the wing or whether he was going to put it up the far side, didn't always mean I was there. Didn't always mean that I, I was going to uh, win that ball. <clears throat> but uh, from, from that point of view, the anticipation of it, I knew where it was coming, where it was going to bounce, how it was going to bounce. Because you had to, from my sport of handball, and to play it at that level, you had to be able to visualise. You know, you had to know whether a guy was going for a kill. You had to know whether a guy was going for the roof. So it wasn't just a matter of when the ball was struck, then you went after it. You had to know what that guy was going to do. It didn't mean I was going to retrieve it all, all the time. It didn't mean that. Because you know what, it could be, it, and it, sometimes it didn't happen, but 90% of the time, top handballers are able to anticipate where that ball is going. And that, that's why I would say for you as coaches, parents, as adults, if you haven't been to a handball match, go see one. Bring the kids along. See how enjoyable it is. See how simple it is. If it's only throwing a ball, if it's only coordinating, it's, it's such an easy game to take up. It's such an easy game to play. There's alleys right around the country. Again, my own young fellow was playing in a Leinster final this year, and I brought him to the Garda depot on many occasions, and Ballymore used this, because obviously I live in Dublin, and we could get into both of those alleys at will. At will, because people are not using them, they're not playing in them when they should be. I'm sure many kids are at home doing the PlayStation or whatever it is during the day. There's a certain amount of obesity out there. There's a certain amount of lack of exercise because when it's wet out here, like it is, there's a certain amount of will we do it today. I know there's many, 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 many matches around the country today and tomorrow that are called off during the week that are called off. And what's the easiest thing to do? The easiest thing to do is say, that's fine, that's called off, we don't do anything. Instead of, you know what, within 10 miles probably of everyone, and I could be wrong, 15 miles, there's a handball alley somewhere that you could be actually doing something very, very, uh, you know, you could be doing something, but the kids could be doing something. And if it's only a matter of, from my point of view, bring them, having a look at it, and if they don't like it, they don't like it. But I would be very surprised very, very surprised if, if, if they didn't. Um, I'm sure there's a few more testimonials uh, in here. I know there's, there's one or two. I'm not going to read them out. Um, that's obviously Paul Brady. Richie Hogan is an up-and-coming Kilkenny player, has won many All-Irelands at handball, has won a couple of American handball titles. Uh, he's, a, he's a cousin of mine, and... Uh, he will be a, a, a phenomenal player, I think, as well. But there's many guys, James McGarry, uh, Ollie Welch, before, who, who coached me. And I suppose the one guy that I would be, I always have a smile on my face, and many people, hopefully you will remember him, but Joe Hennessy, who was a great wing back for the Kilkenny team of the 70s and 80s, and I played with him before he retired in the late 80s. Uh, Joe, I think, over the last, and, and Joe came to a match, myself and Duxy, Walsh played Walter O'Connor and uh, Tom Sheridan in a Leinster final about, I don't know, 1999 or something like that. The game lasted about three hours and uh, went to three different courts to finish on one night. Uh, it was jam-packed out and the game finished 21-20 in a third game. But anyway, it was, it was great. I don't know whether you were there, O'Connor, or not. It was a great game, a uh, phenomenal game. Joe started playing handball again and recently went to the World Championships in, uh, in, in, in Oregon. But he has three All-Ireland handball titles, I think. Uh, he probably took up the game at 44 or 5. He's 52 or 3 now. Uh, it's a game for life. You know, it doesn't matter what the level you play at. You can play at any, any level at all, whether you want to be absolutely competitive or whether you want to go out twice a week and play for an hour with a few guys and get a bit of exercise. 
what better exercise can you actually get to be swinging your arms and getting the body and the whole system going? So that'll be Joe. He said to me, will you play when it comes to Ireland in the over 40s? Because I will be over 40 when it comes back to Ireland. I said, I will. And he said, right, we're going to play doubles together over 40. He said, all I want is a good lad on the left, and I think we could win it. So, so it's Con, unfortunately, Con, you could be getting the bullet. You're obviously not good enough on the left, Con. Um, but again, I hope I haven't bored you too much. Um, I have over 20 handball all Ireland. So I have a couple of uh, world handball titles, as I say, been to uh, America on a huge amount of occasions. Uh, would love to have played a lot more, but I had a second sport, and my number one sport was a, a, a very high level. I see Eugene Brophy down here. Uh, I was challenged one time in New York to a, to a game of handball by uh, someone, and uh, I went and played. And this game can be played, it doesn't matter. It can be played by the wealthiest or the poorest. All you want is you want either one wall, four walls, five walls, whatever it is, it can be played and as I say, you can play it at a very high level or you can play it at whatever level that you want and whatever pace that you want to play it at. But my thing would be, get kids out playing it. I think they'll love it and it'll get them off the armchair. And I know lots of kids love sport now, but lots of kids are, you know, hurling, camogie, soccer, uh, rugby. It's not for everybody. There's a certain amount of bravery. There's a certain amount of hurting that you can get in all those sports. There's a certain amount of bells, bangs that puts kids off. This is a, a lovely sport that anyone can play at any level, at any age. Thanks a lot.